Nikki. Nikki has become a very good friend over the last couple of years. We hit it off right off the bat when she started working. I told you, it's a school night. I want you home, period. Nikki came over and she heard me talking like normal and wanted to see what was going on. She hung up on me. It wasn't about this time. Same old thing. She's 17. She thinks she doesn't have to listen to me anymore. You know, I thought she was this great kid. We get along great. We're a lot alike, you know. She's kind of looking at me a little odd. But her finger kept tapping and tapping. So I just kept talking like normal. So I figured we'd miss this whole teenage rebellious thing. Sure. The next thing I know, the finger stops tapping. And... Oh, my God. Nikki. Boom. She just hit the floor. Oh, my God. Nikki. Nikki, talk to me. I need some help over here. Somebody needs some help over here. It's okay. It's What's going on? It's okay. She's having a seizure. Does Nikki have any history of seizures? No. Oh, no. No, well, she doesn't have seizures. She just had a baby. That's all I know. We need a gurney over here. This happens to people that we take care of, not to our co-workers. When you see this happening, it's a very, very scary thing. I need a gurney in here. We need to get her to a room. Everybody was calm, but still freaking out. You could just sense, the, oh my God, this can't be happening. It's okay, Nikki. She literally was moving so much, and then she, eyes came back, and they just fixed like a doll. Nikki? She just was lifeless. Anybody who works in an emergency department knows that look. Oh my god, I don't feel a pulse. She's not breathing. Her heart isn't beating. She's starting to turn blue. She was in full cardiac arrest. I knew immediately that I needed to get her heart restarted. Or that she would die. Mary, let's get some blood work for Mrs. Nemechek and a chest x-ray. Most ER cases go by the book, but with a few, you have to throw the book away. Two abdominal pains, shaking. I think she should be seen right away. Just ask Dr. Jordan Moskov. The first thing I notice is that she's laying in a stretcher and she's curled up in a ball. And she's shaking so hard that you can actually hear the rattling of the stretcher. Hello, ma'am. I'm Dr. Jordan Moskov. What's your name? Ms. Jackson. My name is Jackson. It was just the strangest thing to see that how someone could go from what appeared to be such tremendous pain and discomfort to just, like, on a dime, just absolutely stop what she was doing and just talk to me completely nonchalantly like nothing was going on. Do you still feel the pain? It's here. The pain is right here. I could tell she was understanding me, but she couldn't really communicate as well as I think she wanted to to me. So she was just kind of telling me I have a problem here. Do you have any nausea? Are you sick to your stomach? No. Any vomiting? Throwing up? All my, my litany of questions, and she answers no to absolutely everything. Okay. Why don't you lie back? I'll give you a brief examination. <sighs> Any pain? Where I'm touching? No, nothing. I'm pushing on her stomach. No pain anywhere. How about here? And she seems great. No. Okay. Nurse K here is just going to grab some blood and we'll do some quick tests, but it seems as though you're in good shape. And I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe she just got better. That was easy. As soon as I walk away from the stretcher, I hear this rattling, and I turn around and she's doing it again. She's in a, like a ball, like a fetal position, squeezing and shaking and like round, round, round. And it's the strangest thing. Ms. Jackson, are you all right? Where does it hurt? The problem is here. That was my first clue that something very odd was, was going on here. This was not going to be your typical belly pain. Something strange was happening. Let's get an IV in her, okay? Let's get those samples immediately. So every time we talk to her, it stops. Okay. Um, I'm just... But as soon as she's left alone, she's shaking and squeezing and rattling. I'll walk it down myself. Let me know as soon as you get the samples back. This is too bizarre. I go back over to her and I'm just like, ma'am, why are you shaking? Why are you squeezing? What are you doing? Must do a doctor. Can you tell me why you need to? Demon. The demon. I must get the demon out. Emergency 
physicians are on the front lines of medical diagnosis. You'll find this interesting. So former nurse Dr. Eileen Couture takes every opportunity to sharpen her skills. Right, I remember hearing about it. Dr. Couture? Yeah. There's a patient I think you should see. Sure. Go ahead. Thanks. As a doctor, I studied the human body inside and out. I always thought the more I knew, the more I could help. But none of Dr. Couture's extensive training would prepare her for this case. A father with an infant and a bizarre complaint. My name is Dr. Couture. Oh, this, this cutie must be Emma, huh? So what brings you in today? Well, uh, my daughter Emma, she has worms. Worms? What kind of worms? I don't know. Little tiny ones coming out of her skin. We were entering uh, unfamiliar territory with this case. Either he was bringing me the strangest case of my career, or he was making this up for some reason. Hey, where in the skin did you see him? Um, her elbow and her hands. When was the last time you saw him? Just this morning, that's why I brought her in here. Sometimes people come in just seeking attention, and it's difficult to determine if there's anything to the complaint. Well, let's put her up here. We'll take a look. It wasn't real obvious, but when I brought her little hands closer to my eye, whoa. There were actually tiny little holes between her fingers. Yeah, I don't really see any worms. They hide. There was no erythema, which is redness. There was no discharge coming out of the wound. They were fresh, clean wounds. But could they really be caused by worms? That was really hard to believe. Okay, we're gonna get some blood work and then we're gonna wrap our hands, see if we can't get them to come out. Uh, how, how old is the baby? Five months. And uh, where, where's mom? She left. I'm on my own with them. Once I started asking the social history of the baby, I came to realize that the father was raising the baby by himself and that the mother was no longer in the picture. I'll get these to the lab. Okay. So we waited about 30 minutes um, 